Hey, hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Kind of chilly. The lights are off in the grow space. Have a few on so we can see what's going on out here. I had to turn them off because it is rather chilly in here. And the I to run all three space heaters, I can't have the lights on at the same time or else the breaker will trip. So that's what's going on there. Just sitting out here at the desk, things are slowly starting to warm up, but as you can see, it is extremely dry in here. 36.7 is the relative humidity. That is way too dry, too dry for my liking. That's what happens when you have three space heaters running. I have one running at 1500 watts, the other two running at 750. Normally I don't have to have all three running when it's in the 30s outside, but this plastic, just isn't quite cutting it. I put that up last week and uh, I mentioned when I did that video that uh, the tape I was using to hold everything tight to the ceiling, just, it wasn't working. It was just falling down. So there's some big gaps up there. So things are not as efficient as they need to be. It's not the end of the world. There's some new tape coming in the mail so I can get that fixed up. But right now I am more focused on getting the humidity up know why my voice fell out there. It's like I forgot I was filming a video. I mentioned last week that I would talk about what I've been doing with the humidity out here. I have a new setup and uh, we'll go ahead and talk about that. In years past, I've always just used standard humidifiers, the Lavoie and those sorts of things. I'm not a huge fan of the Lavoie because I think it's a pain to have to refill it. We have to take the tank off and flip it around and everything. Kind of annoying. And for a space this big, not really all that useful, at least not when the air is this dry if I have to run all of the heaters. So I spent some time looking into getting just like a greenhouse fogger. Greenhouse foggers are these contraptions that's, I don't, I don't really know how to describe it. It's like a big dome that sits on top of a basin and you run a water line to it and then it just, it mists the place up. They work well, but from the majority of the reviews that I've read about them, the homemade versions tend to work better and are a lot cheaper. It's those greenhouse misters, sometimes they can run well, well, well over $300 usually. And I was like, you know what? I think that would be overkill out here. I'd have to run it to a water line, which is doable, but I'd rather not. So I thought, you know, why not just do my own thing? Make something else work for me. And what a perfect time to talk about this because I actually need to clean this up. It's got some algae buildup on it. Try and keep the discs clean on this thing as much as possible. Try and get as much water out of the floats as I can so I don't end up being sopping wet just from trying to wipe a little bit of algae off the top of this thing. So this is a 10 disc, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 disc ultrasonic humidifier or Mr. Fogger. They go by various names, but I'm using it for the purposes of humidity. And these essentially are just a big metal bar that have the mechanisms in them that are inside of a lot of the humidifiers that people use. You can get them in all different sizes. You can get them from just having a single disc to having, I think the most I've ever seen is 12, maybe 14, but I'm sure bigger ones exist. People put them in their pools and in their ponds for different effects, different light shows. It's neat when you have lights shining through them. Overall, these things are just neat in general, but if you're using them for your plants just because you want some more humidity, very, very nifty. It's not the most practical thing to use, though, because if you wanted to use this the way most people use this, which is where you take just this metal part right here, these plastic pieces are separate. I had to buy those separately, and it just keeps it floating. These have to be at a specific water level. Just the right amount of water has to be above them in order for them to work properly. So what people do with these in their greenhouses is they will take these and put them in a Rubbermaid tote or, I mean, any kind of plastic container and then put a water line that runs into a float valve so that the water stays the right level because these burn through water very, very quickly. So you need to have a constant source of water being fed into it. You set it on top of a couple of bricks, something, whatever you need to do to keep it at the appropriate water level so that the water will be just right above those discs, that's also where that float valve has to be. On the surface, you cut a hole to put a fan in the top, just like a cheapy cheap fan, nothing special. You cut another hole on the other end, put a flange on there with a PVC pipe, maybe an elbow to direct the flow. And then the fan and the fogger mister need to be plugged into the same things that they can be running simultaneously. And those can go onto little humidistats so that they can run automatically. 
if that's how people prefer to do it or the way I'm doing it, I want to monitor how it runs. Or for myself, I'm, I did get a humidistat. I haven't even taken it out of the package yet because the thing is, it's actually so powerful. I prefer this not run unsupervised because if you watched last week's video and you'll see in this one a little bit later, this is, it's really, it gets foggy in here. It's like being inside of a cloud. With all the electronics and everything that are out here, all the different light bulbs and I have, uh, you know, just random things plugged in all over the place. I think it's just safer to be able to monitor while it's running. And this does such a good job getting the humidity up. It happens so fast that it's not a big deal just plugging it in and I can go somewhere else for a little while and come back and things are nice and misty in here and that humidity usually holds for the rest of the day. So I'm just floating mine in the pond back here. Remember when I set the growth space up, I talked some about how I wasn't sure if I was going to bring the fish in because the goldfish and everything, they can stay outside. I just have a little bubble running to make sure a hole stays and the ice in that pond. One of the big reasons I decided to leave them out was so that I could do this. And I've talked about doing this sort of setup for a few years and just never got around to it. And since there were fish in the water, I didn't want to do this. It seemed like a bad idea. I didn't want to be out here inhaling vaporized fish feces, right? That's probably not a good idea. I think I that could have caused some long problems, probably would have gotten sick. As it is, it's an enclosed space. Right now it's not, I mean, it's never airtight. That wouldn't be safe, but it's usually sealed up fairly well, except for right now, because I need to get some new tape. So that's one of the reasons I left the fish out. So I was like, well, they can stay outside. I do, you know, I'll miss being able to see them swimming around in here, but that's okay. They can stay outside and I can have this floating in there and keeping things nice and humid. So that was the reasoning behind that for keeping the fish out. And then you may also remember when I set the growth space up, I put this inline fan up here and put a flange on there, a flange that points right down to the water here. And I did that so that when this was set up, it could help blow all that mist around and get things nice and foggy in here. So that's enough about why and how. Let's go ahead and set it up and get it plugged in. That's more fun. You can see I just put mine on floaters. This is the easiest way to do it. Keeps it at just the right level so that it can make that mess. Oh, made a mess here. This water wiped up quickly so I can set my camera down without putting it in a puddle. Okay, now just plug this in. Start getting the humidity up in here. The temperature will drop a little bit. That's normal and to be expected. I'm also going to turn my ceiling fan off because that will allow the area to go ahead and fill up some more. I like to let the pool go ahead and get nice and full of the fog before I start getting the fans going and blowing everything around. I need to get something figured out so I can anchor these stromanthes over here. They keep drifting away over into the corner. It's too shady over there. Tie them to a string on a rock or something like that. Really, I could just move my bubblers around and redirect the current. That's really neither here nor there. Look at it. Doesn't that look fun? That's the other nice thing about it is it just looks cool. Now there's a nice dense layer of mist in there. So go ahead and turn the fan on and it's just on low and that's going to help blow it around. When it's been running for a longer amount of time, that's when I'll use the inline fan to blow that. I mean, I'll go ahead and turn that on so you can see it'll just blow this completely clear. Turning that on, it's loud, but very effective. Watch this. It just, it's got, give it a second. It's got to turn on. Okay, there it goes. That's all just from having this one up there turned on. Gets that mist blowing all around the place. But still, like I said, I like to get it built up a little bit more before I start doing that. Now I'm going to sit back and watch the humidity rise. The temperature is probably also going to drop because I had to unplug one of the heaters to plug this in. That was one of the issues with this method is that it does use a lot of power. I searched around quite a bit when picking one out and uh, I tried to get one that didn't use as much electricity. There was one similar to this that was considerably more expensive, used 400 watts. And I was like, I just don't think I can spare that many watts with all my grow lights and everything. This one's 250. Now I would assume the higher the wattage you go, the more mist you would get, but I don't, this is more than enough. Like probably about 25, 30 minutes. It's going to be very, very, very foggy in here. So I didn't need to go any bigger than this. This is totally fine. The humidity is going up very quickly. I'm gonna sit back, give this like, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, just because it is extremely, incredibly dry in here, drier than it's been all year. And uh, we'll see 
what happens. See how much misty, fun, foggy stuff can get going on in here. Okay, so I accidentally did that thing where I got really distracted and went off and did other things for about, I don't know, two or three hours and it's, it's too much. So this is what I'm talking about. You see that? You can't have all that mist floating around around the lights like that. It just, that seems dangerous, doesn't it? Seems dangerous to me. So I cranked the fan on up to ultra high. Where is it? Can you see it? There it is, right there. Both the fans are running to help disperse all of that mist. It was just, I walked in here, came in through the little zipper over there and could barely even see in front of myself. It just, I didn't like it. Too much, too much fog, not okay. So it's at 93% right now, which is too high. It was at 98 when I came out here. And that's totally unnecessary. I prefer to keep my humidity right around uh, between 50 and 70% somewhere in there that's usually just fine. I'll go ahead and turn this fan off because I feel like that might be a little bit too loud for the video. So I'm kind of calm things down a little bit. Yeah, I felt like I was having to scream to get past that. So uh, it doesn't need to be that sticky in here, especially with the plants that I'm growing. When the humidity is that high, it just, it sticks to everything. Like the plants are stopping wet. Sometimes that's okay. Like these vandacious orchids, they kind of like it when the, excuse you, why aren't you working? autofocus. What's up with you? But any of the plants that have aerial roots on them, they're obviously really going to enjoy all of that extra moisture. But then uh, there's a problem with having all of that collecting on the foliage of the plants. Like you can kind of maybe see there's water droplets on pretty much everything out here. It was on the plastic and all over the place. That's when things can become problematic and start having issues with rot, especially when it's not warm because I had to unplug a heater to plug the humidifier in. So it's a lot cooler out here now. It's like, what did that thing say? 61. And that'll go back up as soon as I turn the heater on and then that heater will help bring the humidity back down. So uh, while this is great and I'm loving it, uh, there are some practicality issues. Well, one being most people probably don't have a like little pool or a pond in their grow area. So this isn't really applicable to a lot of people. That's why I made sure to talk about in the beginning about how to set it up into your own tote, your own whatever you call, I don't even know what you call those things. Greenhouse humidifier, Mr. Fogger kind of thing, a DIY for that. That's much more practical than obviously setting up a pond in your grow area. Another thing is that it's not just about, or it's not just important to keep the humidity high, but it's also really important that things can be consistent. So it will not be ideal if the humidity plummets into the 30s and then shoots back up to 90. If that happens every single day, the plants aren't really going to appreciate that either. Consistency is important. It can fluctuate some. Having some temperature fluctuation and some humidity fluctuation, totally fine. That's what happens in nature. It's what goes on outdoors. That's fine. If I do end up putting this onto a timer, which I'm thinking maybe I will just because I have the humidistat, the thing to plug it into, I will put the humidistat on a timer so it can only run during a certain time of the day for like, I don't know, set it to run for maybe 30 minutes, very, very, very early morning. because That's when it's naturally more humid in nature outside. And then maybe again for another half hour in the late afternoon or early evening, something like that. That's something I'll just have to play around with to really tweak things and get them working more appropriately. And you saw it started to clear up, but there's that haze up there around those light bulbs and that just it makes me nervous the shop lights that are out here that are over here on my racks or the tables really those are rated for some moisture so i think that that shouldn't be an issue but all the other lights and things that are out here including my camera like i didn't even want to come out here with my camera i let that fan run for a good probably 15 minutes before i grab the camera come out here because it's just you know moisture and electronics it's a bad combination so if i do get this set onto the humidistat which i would show you but i don't i have no idea where i put it i don't know what i did with it it was with a bunch of supplies i ordered back in like november something like that and i it's around here somewhere if i do set that so that it can run for half an hour in the morning then i'll set it to run if the humidity hits probably 55 percent would be a good place to set that and I don't want it to be any any higher than like 80% out here because when it gets too humid, too sticky, like I said, you can start to have some problems, especially if the temperatures are cooler. Well, it's 61 degrees. That's what that says, right? It's 61 degrees in here. 
they don't need 90% humidity. That's just going to be cold, wet plants. And then uh, that's when issues with root rot start to show up. I certainly don't want to have to mess with that. But the temperatures should become more stable in here, especially once I get the tape up and finish taping the perimeter of this plastic. That will hold the heat in and make a tremendous difference. Because as it is right now, uh, you know, the heat rises. And then having gaps in the plastic up there, that warm air is just flowing right out of here. It's very wasteful. So that new tape will hopefully be here in a few days. Shipping's been really weird with a lot of things, so I don't know when it's going to get here. But once it's here, that will help hold the temperatures and keep things more stable. I normally let the temperatures fluctuate in here a fair amount. I don't mind if they drop into the upper 50s, preferably though, mid 60s at nighttime and then up into the mid 70s and lower 80s during the day. Having that rise and fall, it's just a natural thing for the plants. It's especially great for the orchids. They really do appreciate having that shift throughout the day, having it nice and warm during the day, then a little cool off at nighttime. That's how it helps to get some buds going and some flowers on those types of plants anyways. It's just gonna require a little bit of tinkering, some playing around with, because as things get warmer, those heaters run, I'll have to see how much they really are going to dry the air out. Getting the temperature up in here right now, I think has been a bigger issue because this pool full of water got pretty dang cold and it takes a long time to warm the water back up. Once that water is nice and warm, that actually helps stabilize the temperature in here and keep things warmer. It's just a matter of getting it back up there. It cools much faster than it warms back up. Humidity is one of those things with growing houseplants and tropical plants where I've uh, tried to pay attention to it in the past and always make sure that it was humid enough, but it's just always been a struggle getting it to be uh, higher out here. Even with it being warm and keeping the plants watered, that alone makes a humongous difference with humidity is having hydrated plants all packed together because the plants release moisture too. So that helps an awful lot. But, you know, I only water like maybe once every week to 10 days when the temperatures are cooler out here. I mean, well, when it's in the 60s, maybe every two weeks. I don't water very often, but typically it's in the 70s out here and much warmer. So things get watered weekly, then things will be nice and moist for several days, not even several, maybe three or four days. And then things dry off again because of the space heaters. And where I live, it's just typically fairly dry during the winter time. So that doesn't help very much either. But there are so many benefits to having the humidity with the plants. One of the biggest ones is just reducing spider mites. Having good airflow and good humidity makes a tremendous difference with spider mites. They don't like the airflow and they don't like the humidity. Generally, I don't have issues with spider mites out here. That's usually a problem with the plants that are in the house because the air is a little bit drier, usually around 45 to 50% in the house, something like that. Out here, that's never really been a problem because it's always been at least humid enough to keep the spider mites away. And uh, another great perk to having things nice and moist in the air is we don't have to water as much. Having the moisture in there helps a lot with reducing how quickly the plants transpire and lose the moisture from their foliage. They're always going to do some of that it's just part of their natural growing process. You want them to do that. But, you know, if the humidity is 30 something percent or even 40 percent, it's going to happen a lot more quickly. The plants are going to pull water up more quickly and you have to water them more often. And sometimes that's all right. I mean, I usually enjoy watering the plants, but it can be a bit much sometimes when you have a lot of plants. People with big collections probably understand what I'm saying, that you don't want to be constantly watering. And I don't water on a schedule out here either. It's just when plants start to look dry, I go ahead and do some watering. Watering schedules can be problematic sometimes. Just kind of depends on what the mix of plants are for people and growing habits. And if you have consistent soil types with everything, that makes a huge difference too. If I have a whole bunch of plants potted up with one mix and a whole bunch with another, one dries faster than the other, and then you end up watering one too much and the other one's not getting watered up. It just gets so complicated. I don't like messing with it. And then the only other part of this I hadn't really talked about is just the safety. I've kind of mentioned about this maybe not being the best thing to inhale. That's why I don't have the fish in the water. I also don't have any filters running in here because I don't have any fish in there. Typically there were waterfall filters back there that had filtration for collecting the fish waste. That's the mechanical. And then I had carbon pads in there, which is similar, pretty much the same as uh, the horticultural charcoal that we use in terrariums and a lot of our potting mixes helps remove impurities, and then the biggest thing was the biological filtration. I don't really need that in this since there aren't fish in here. However, since I am inhaling this while I'm out here, 
and it's settling on the leaves of the plants, I do think it might still be a good idea for me to hook up a carbon reactor, which again, that's the same as that horticultural charcoal. That will help remove some impurities from the water. The reactor is just a cylinder, fill it with carbon, and that it gets hooked to a pump that pushes water in, it goes through and comes back out. That helps clean the water that's in here. So I will probably hook one of those up just to be safe, just for a little bit of extra safety for myself and the plants, and then a UV sterilizer, which I had on here whenever I had fish. I would change the bulb every year. I have a 36 watt ultraviolet sterilizer that I use in this. The point of that is to help kill off parasites and bacteria. and you know, it's an ultraviolet sterilizer. With everything that's been going with COVID, I think we're all fairly familiar with UV sterilization at this point, right? So it's the same thing, it's just for water. So I think I will probably go ahead and set those back up just to be safe, just because like I said, this is being inhaled and it's settling on the leaves of the plant. So I really do wanna make sure that the water's very clean. I have another filter I'll probably put up just to help keep the water a little bit extra clean. Cause like I said, I just don't wanna inhale nasty water and I don't want nasty water settling on the leaves of the plants. I don't know about what ends up coming with the water, with this mist, with this vapor as it moves around. I just have to assume, just to be safe, that whatever's in that water is probably also what's being vaporized and floating around, right? Seems like a safe assumption. Dry air, such a big contributor to a lot of problems that we have with our plants, like crispy leaves. See, I got some crisp back here on this colocasia. This is the colocasia black coral that what's up with the focus come on camera why aren't you working today dry air no good that doesn't need to happen and also be a really big part as to why we lose some of the flowers and have bud blast on a lot of the plants like i have this lime tree out here the lime probably not quite as picky about it but still having the air more moist it's going to be better for holding the flowers on to those and even more so what I care about more than the lime tree are the orchids. When the air is really dry, sometimes they like to bud blast. So they'll put out a pretty spike and it gets ready to bloom and then just blech, it just dries up and dies. And I have a fair amount of orchids coming in the mail this year because I have a collection that I'm trying to replenish. So things need to be a little bit extra humid out here because I don't want to have to fuss with them too much. And then leaf size or just leaf quality on aeroids low humidity, drier air. Usually you tend to get smaller leaves, leaves that sometimes may be a little bit wonky, a little bit funky. So now I would say I definitely don't have to worry about that this year. Shouldn't be a problem. It got so wet in here. Look at the roots on this anthurium back here. Nice and green, like it's just been watered, but it hasn't. I just walked off, got distracted, and wasn't paying attention to the fact that I have this mist maker taking over the place, turning things into a little rainforest. Really nifty with the orchids though. That is a really nice thing with these vandaceous orchids, the ones that hang and they are just aerial roots. They're not potted up. Typically with these, it can be a struggle keeping these hydrated during the winter. And I would normally soak them down here in this pool, but with the humidity the way it's been, as long as that thing's been running and I just give them a light spray with a spray bottle, they're staying green for a pretty long time, usually a couple of hours. And that's something I've never really been able to achieve out here. Even with all the other humidifiers I've run, never been able to keep the roots on the Vandas green for more than like maybe 45 minutes to an hour, which is okay, they've done fine, but it's a lot easier to keep them hydrated and to fertilize them if those roots stay green. The faster they dry out, the more often they have to be watered. Well, I suppose that's just rule of thumb with plants in general, isn't it? Yeah, that's not just the orchids, that's all of them. That's just plants. You might be wondering why I didn't turn this off when the humidity got really high. I just left it on because quite frankly, it looks really cool. And I enjoy having the mist and the fog floating around the background while I'm filming, especially because that's the entire topic of the video is this humidifier, this ultrasonic fogger that I got going on back here. I don't know if you'll be able to see on camera, but the leaves back here, like on this dragon's wing begonia and on there's another color casey here. It's another black coral little bit on the Prince of Orange philodendron. There's just, they're covered in water droplets. Not as much as they were when I first came out here, but when I turned the fan on, the extra fan, to help blow it around more, it just got everything sopping wet. They finally started to dry off. Like I said, don't, things don't need to be sopping wet when it's only 60 degrees out here. That's not good. That'll cause problems. Speaking of that begonia, look at how wonderfully that plant's doing out here. Help if I get the camera a little bit closer to it. I don't want to get too close because I'm holding my camera right over the water right now, and that's incredibly nerve-wracking. 
could go wrong very quickly. This is just a pink dragon's wing begonia. Nothing special, just an annual I picked up. They can be grown fairly easily though, as houseplants and as perennials, but they don't usually keep flowering this far into the winter. But I replaced the bulbs up here with those Sansi, Sansai, full spectrum bulbs when I set the grow space up. I think I filmed that, maybe. And they've just been flowering and flowering and flowering and totally loving these grow lights. Even with it being fairly cool out here, they seem really happy. They seem to be enjoying things. I've been thinking about doing a little bit of a plant tour out here, probably next weekend, but like a working plant tour because there are a lot of plants that need some work and some TLC just because it stayed cool in here for such a long time. You know, I really didn't do much out here the entire month of December, so th there's some things to make up for because of that. It's like crispy leaves. That's mostly what it is, is just printing up crispy leaves, some yellow leaves, like there's one that in Thurium back there. Probably a few repots. I have a Cebu Blue that's over there that I just cannot keep hydrated. And when that happens, it may as well just repop the plant. I mean, look at this thing. Isn't that just sad and pathetic? It looks so terrible. I'm watering it like probably twice a week and it's just, it's not rehydrating, which is usually indicative, indicative, which is usually indicative of root rot or just the plant being completely root bound. And I think that it's probably root bound I'm not noticing any types of foul odors or anything coming from in here. I'm going to try my best to get these stems in here to spring back to life to some extent, get them to fill out a little bit more, and then give this a repot. I don't want to do it quite yet because it's still, it's just so dehydrated. I feel like it might be more damaging to try and do that repot right now as opposed to just giving it a little bit more time to fill back out or to plump back up, I should say. And then that way, because I'll have to give this a very heavy prune with a repot, and if these are totally dehydrated, I can't use them for propagation. And I would like to be able to use some of them for propagation. If that would be ideal, but this is, there wouldn't be much point in trying to propagate a plant that looks like this. It might do okay, maybe, but it would be better to go ahead and get it off onto a better foot before starting. Same thing with, I have another pothos over here that it's doing the same thing. I really think that they just need new pots. These have been in these pots for years and it's time. It's beyond time. They're very thirsty, very sad plants. Okay, that's gonna do it. A lot of talk about the humidifier. I don't know why I'm screaming. I keep forgetting that I have a wireless mic on right now. A little glimpse of the iguana. Don't get to see him very often, but out and about, thought I'd let you say hi. If I do end up putting this onto the thermostat, the hydro, hygrometer, hygrostat, the humidity <laughs> thermostat, that's not what it's called. The controller, the thing with the sensor on it that will say, okay, turn on if the air's too dry. If I end up setting that up with a little timer so that there's like a 30 minute to an hour window that it could run, I'll make sure to include that in the video if I end up doing that. I don't know if I'm going to need to, but we'll see. The only reason that I was talking about putting the sensor also on a timer is that that way I'll know the window during the day when it will be running so I can pop out and check on things and make sure that there's not too much water collecting up around the electronics or anything like that. Just more for my peace of mind than anything else. Oh, and the other thing that I forgot to include when talking about uh, cleaning the water out is that's also to hopefully help reduce how often that I actually have to clean this thing all those little pads that are on there that do the ultrasonic action that make all the fun mist and fog if the water's cleaner then I won't have to clean those as often either so it's better for me better for the plants and probably better for the life of the discs that are down there any humidifier you have to clean them it's really important to keep those clean for your own safety you don't want to be inhaling moldy nasty weird like fungusy water that's not good for you what did I say last week? I don't want to get a UTI when I meant to say upper respiratory infection. That's a real thing to be concerned about though with humidifiers. Keeping them clean is really important and uh, that was something that I just was getting so annoyed with with the other smaller humidifiers was one if they don't refill from the top I'm not into it because when you have three or four of them that's just it's it's not like a ton of work but I don't want to do that every day. I don't want to take the tanks off and flip them upside down and refill them and put them up and you always end up spilling some water. I just don't like it, especially with like the Lavoite, not to like talk trash on them, but they're so expensive. And then to have to take the tank off like that, like come on, if you're gonna charge 80 bucks for the humidifier, can we make them top fill, please? And thank you, that would be nice. I know the Aleka homes, I think that those are top fill. I don't have one. They offered to send me one and I did the thing that I do where I just don't respond because I get wary about companies and brand promotions and those sorts of things. But to my understanding, that's a top fill. 
and I considered getting one, but I really, I don't think that I need a different humidifier out here at this point. This is going to do the trick. I'm kind of wishing that I had just done this a few years ago because I would have saved a lot of money on humidifiers because I have the Lavoite and I have three other, hum I have four humidifiers total that I used to run out here, which is just under $400 worth of humidifiers. And this was expensive, like when you do the full setup with the floater and the discs that are in there, it was like $145 and then you, th maybe 150 and then you throw the Hydrama Hygrostat, the humidity sensor controller onto the whole thing that bumps it up to closer like 180 190 so uh yeah not cheap but much cheaper than the greenhouse foggers and humidifiers in theory just as efficient if not more because like i said i did a lot of reading on the, the more affordable pre-made humidifiers foggers that are made for big spaces for greenhouses and uh, what i was gathering from most of the reviews was that they work well, but not as well as most people wanted them to. But just because of how much they cost. Like I said, they usually start around $300, maybe just a little bit below that. And then it, they just get more and more expensive from there. For 300 bucks, I want to feel like I'm in a steam room, right? So this is just under that. I can't speak for the longevity of it. I don't know. I really, I have no idea if we'll find out together. Because there are tons and tons and tons of different ultrasonic humidifiers and discs for ponds and pools and those sorts of things on just like Amazon alone. Tons of them. And uh, it can be really hard to pick one out. I went with one that had a decent amount of reviews, but not a ton because the ones that had lots and lots of reviews were significantly more expensive. And this is kind of experimental. So we'll see together how long this less. It's possible that running every single day, if I only get a few months out of it or one season out of it, it doesn't work again next year, then it would make sense to go ahead and get one of those ones that's more expensive and pre-made. But you have to hook those into a water line, which is doable out here. There's a water line, but it would be tricky and take a long time to get to it, basically. I don't want to have to do that if I don't have to. As long as I have this out here, this big pool, there's no reason to mess with that, right? Oh, and then the very last thing, I was about to wrap it up, and then I remembered one other thing. The uh, um, hard water. So you know how with the regular humidifiers, you get those hard water stains that can settle on the top, and if that happens, you really need to use distilled water. I am uh, currently refilling this entire thing with my RO water. I have an RO filter in the house that I use for my fish tank, so that is helping tremendously. I haven't noticed any buildup. I've been using this out here for probably a solid month that I've been using this and I haven't noticed any hard water build up because I think that that could be something that might be a problem if you have that water settling on the foliage of the plants. Anything that can settle into the pores of the plants or cause some sort of scale, some sort of crustiness, a film on the surface of the leaves, that would be very bad because that'll interfere with photosynthesis. Want the leaves to be nice and clean and you don't want those pores to be clogged up in the leaves either because they need to be able to transpire. They need to be able to release vapors and all the things that go on there. So, so far that hasn't been a problem, but it is something that I'm paying attention to and watching out for. Whew, okay, so <laughs> I know Saturdays, usually I like vlog and I'm hopping over the place doing things. I mentioned last weekend, I talked about the humidifier this weekend. I had a feeling it was going to be a longer video because it's just one of those things where there's a lot to talk about with it. So that's what that is. Now, y'all know what's going on back there where all the smoky foggy stuff is coming from. And again, next week I was thinking about maybe doing like a working plant tour out here. How's that sound? It's going to be a vlog. So whatever happens, happens. But I think that might be kind of fun because I don't really spend a lot of time walking around just looking at everything and talking about like what's working and what isn't working. That could be a fun thing to explore. I don't know, let me know. Well, I wanted to make sure to show some of the pets because they haven't been in this vlog at all, but everybody's hiding. Buddy's here, hey buddy, can you say hi? You've been a very loud, noisy dog today. So many squirrels outside to bark at. Dog, he loves squirrels. Toby, yes, Toby's over there hanging out. But where are the cats? You seen the cats anywhere? Where's Punkin? No, you don't know? I don't either. <laughs> You're so cute, Toby. Such a good boy. I bet Pumpkin's over here somewhere, right? Maybe? Yeah, there you are, Pumpkin. You say hi? You sleeping? Yeah, that's a dumb question. I'm sorry for disrupting you. I don't want to disturb Pumpkin. I know y'all like to see her, but 
She's doing her thing. I want to leave her alone. Not that she doesn't get enough sleep. I mean, she's a cat. That's what she does 23 hours a day. You might remember in last week's video, I talked about just very briefly how the fish jump up and bang the lid to get the food that falls on it. Well, they finally got their way. <laughs> I came in here this morning and they had gotten the lid down. So I need to reach in there and get that back out. You did a good job. You did a very good job breaking the lid. That's what they do. Oscars are strong and tenacious, so no surprise there. Never had that happen before. Not a big deal though, easy to fix. I really should probably just put a glass lid on this tank, shouldn't I? The plastic is fine. It's just like greenhouse plastic you get from Lowe's or Home Depot from the hardware store. It's pretty cheap, pretty affordable. Cut it up, throw it on top of the tank. But a glass lid might be a little bit better for these Oscars. And then I won't have the constant water spots on the glass either. That drives me nuts. Christmas stuff is still up. I'm probably going to go ahead and take it down next week just because it's time. And I kind of, I would like to get this window back also. I have a fair amount of plants actually that are out there in the grow space that traditionally go in here, but I filled the place with gingerbread houses and then with more plants. I forgot to mention last week that I got a Syngonium on clearance. This one, when I was at Lowe's during the vlog, this was on the rack with the poinsettias. No idea why. It looked totally fine. I asked them, I was like, did this supposed to be on clearance? And they said... Yeah, so I'm like, all right, well, I'll take it because it was only like five bucks and it's very full. It has a lot of leaves on the inside that don't look too terribly happy. They're having some trouble unfurling. I think with some more light, they'll probably open up. I probably shouldn't smack the plant like that. I just, I got excited. I was really feeling it. Gloriosum's still looking good. That pancake leaf hasn't opened yet, but it's about there. It's about ready to go ahead and pop open. I'm interested to see what that's going to look like. The point though is that next week I need to Go ahead and get the Christmas stuff put away, take down the garland. I'll probably leave this just because it brightens the area and it makes me happy. And I don't really care if that bothers people. It's my house and I'm going to enjoy looking at it. There was a time when I would have made sure to make sure things looked perfect out here for being in videos, but that, <laughs> that was years ago. Those days are over. This window gets so dark, having some color over here. It's nice having a little something to brighten up the day, but it's definitely time to put some Christmas stuff away, and then I can get the terrarium set back up over here. They are not enjoying life over in the corner where they are right now. The window's just not quite bright enough for them. Okay, that's gonna do it. Lots of humidity talk. <laughs> that was kind of what I feared would happen. It's why I want it to be its own dedicated video. What are some things you all do for your humidity? Do you have humidity struggles? I know some of you live in places that are very, very dry, wood-burning stoves and whatnot can really be problematic. So, I mean, what I'm dealing with out there, it's nothing compared to what some of you have to deal with to keep things nice and moist for your plants. Comment down below. Hope you are doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.